Welcome back, suckers! Yes, Sanity is now officially, I think, back. Although this is the same intro line I've said the past four weekends, I've been trying to do ZIT. So let's see if this, let's see if I manage to do it. To actually release an episode this time. So I'm back. Like I don't know, five million months later since my last ZIT, and although I did promise that I'm going to make an episode about visibility you know, how to set up visibility meshes and all that stuff that's sort of been the reason why this is so delayed I've been trying to do that for, you know, like since New Year actually but every weekend the, the, the tutorial just ends up looking boring and I mean, it gets to the point across but it's just not interesting to look at, so I said to myself, well, I'm going to do it next time, and next time it's the, the, the same story again. And it's not really interesting, so I decided to jump the topic. Yes, this is not going to be a story about visibility. It's going to be a story about something fun, actually. Because, screw that. Uh, so I've been thinking, and I'm going to dedicate this week to creating a tutorial about how to create your, well, poses, how to use the animation editor, how to pose characters, maybe create some screenshots, and in the second part of this tutorial, it's going to be a bit more advanced, I'm going to go over how to actually make some animations, uh, and keyframe them, then import them back into a working character NPC slash construct thing. Trigger them with lore and create like this cutscene thing. So we'll see how well that will turn out. So yeah. So yeah, this is not a tutorial about visibility, it's about animation. Okay, so let's let's start. I'm going to in, in the first part of this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create a pose for your character, have that pose be visible outside of the animation editor, and create a screenshot inside the editor as well. So I just added a model and now I'm going to load Sam in it. So I have, you know, content, CSRP, models, players, Sam. By the way, you should be able to now clearly read these things. ZAT is now in 1080p, so the resolution is higher for those of you who care about that sort of thing. Okay, so loading Sam, slowly. And in CSM3, creating poses and animations for characters like this has gotten substantially easier ever since Go Team released the edit data for everything, thanks to the efforts of a certain nameless CSC community member. We don't know who that is. Anyhow, I'm going to go to the animation editor, and here we have all of the game left all of the animations loaded for this model available for our news. So let's select biped action and I don't know, IO06. So this is like this is like any standard program. You have a timeline here and if I click anywhere no, anywhere on it, the the little uh, slightly bluish but uh, uh, moves to it. This is the this is the timeline, and I can drag and I can drag it around. Or if I want to play the animation at the speed at, it, at its own speed, I'm just going to press this button and press play. This is my, one of my favorite idle animations. But yeah, and the the way I'm going to show you guys how to create your poses though is going to assume that you don't have edit data. This is how we used to do it before, and this is and this is still how you have to do it in CSM HD if you want to create a pose there. And this this workflow isn't is the same if you have edit data. Uh, it's just that 
it, there are a few extra steps you have to do to be able to create a pose without having edit data. So I'm going to, have, I'm going to add a little text showing you that these steps you don't have to do if you already have edit data. So text alone. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unshare my model and go to animation host. And the animation host or the ANH file, this is like a group of many other groups. It holds these files and each of these files has also us has the actual animation in it. So it's like a group of of groups that contain the animations. And if you don't have edit data, the animation editor would won't like this. So you have to unshare the the anim host and then remove all of the subgroups with the X button. And now we're going to add our own one and leave it at num. And now we are ready to create a pose. We're going to go to the animation date editor. And this is, and from now on, this is, you can, this, this is the normal workflow that you do even if you do have edit data. So remove the text. We're going to click here, actions, create new anim set. And let's go with for uh, some poses. And this is the the subgroup of that of the of the A and H file. From the second panel, we're going to create action, create animation, and it's going to be the actual animation. And let's see something. And we all in now that I created the animation, the timeline showed up. And finally, I have to create all of the envelopes. So from the last one, actions, manage envelopes. I'm just going to go create all, although if you, and this, that's going to be for later. So just create, click, create all, and then press OK. And here we go. We have all of the bones of the CSM rig or any other model that you want to more pose. There are a few things I have to mention. Uh, I think I'm, I'm, no, you know that. To move a bone, simply just it, clicking on the bone, selects it, and you manipulate it using the very same controls that you use to manipulate everything else. So I can rotate it, you know, stuff like that. Create, I don't know, like a jumping pose. See how it looks like a jumping. A very useful thing to do when animating is to turn on local uh, transformation for all of the bones. So, for example, this bone is rotated, and to me, if I want to twist his arm, so it's like rotating this way, that's going to be really hard if I'm using the global XYZ. So, I'm going to go from somewhere here, access, no. No, system, no, okay. Center. Not sure if I can control that from these buttons here, and if I in, if I can, yeah, I can. So yeah, I'm going to go to tools, click on guide, and on somewhere around from here. So from coordinate system, I'm going to click on objects, and now the transformation is local for this bone, so I can easily twist it. So this is, you know, world transformation. The X. Y and uh, Z and Y. And this is the object transformation mode, which, are, which is kind of really easier for me to create animations with. So that's like a tip. And if you want, and if you want this pose to remain after you're happy, or actually, if you want to reset it, you can just click anywhere on the timeline. And any change you've made, so for example, if I do this horrible thing, like to Sam, and I want to revert my atrocities onto mankind, I can just click anywhere on the timeline. And since all of the keyframes of the bones haven't been set yet, they're going to revert to default. Okay, so let's start working on our epic stance. So, I don't know, 
Well, oh, they just look like a bit. So, maybe move the Phelox bone a bit downward. Get yeah, to be a bit like he's sort of crouching, but only a bit like he's ready. Ready pulls. Let's move this a bit. And I'm going to. So, kind of like more, more weight to his stance. I don't know. It's going to like take a, a lot of playing around. Usually, creating something like this looks pretty awesome. And now for hands, what would I want him even looking at? Like looking epically into the future or something, or maybe like just the side or something like that. No. Okay, none of it. Okay, not. I'm going to speed this up. Or maybe not. You guys might have find it more fun to watch me push bones for quite a while, probably. Wait. Why is this suddenly transforming based on... No. Okay. Maybe couple of silence. This is starting to look even so sillier by the minute. Okay, I'm going to help speed this up. Speed up. And there we go. Our pose has been created, more or less. Kind of goes to show you that if your model looks good, any crappy pose would look good on it too, I guess. Eh, it's okay, I guess. At least for this tutorial. Usually I might spend more time on it, but... I don't, know. I don't know, let's leave it like this. Now, after you've set up your poles, you have to be very, 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 really careful not to move your timeline because then you're going to lose everything. So now just let go of everything and press non plus to select all of your bones and enter to invoke the keyframe maker too. Uh, and it's going to create a keyframe for all the selected bones at the selected frame, which is zero. So now when I press OK, I can now freely move the timeline. And for those of you more witty, this is really how you animate too. So if I go to like keyframe 15 and move this bone, which I've already created a keyframe at frame zero and create a new one, it's going to create an animation. So, yeah, but I'm going to go into more depth on how to animate these later. So for now, this is our pose, and let's see how to uh, enable this into the world editor. So, pressing E to return to my world editor, and now, from Entity, there you have uh, auto start animation. And if I type the name of any animation, it's going to display it in the viewport, and since our epic stance animation has only one keyframe, it's going to be like this in our viewport. Okay, that looks pretty nice. So he's like looking into the distance, but I don't know what. Let's add some lightning. From a previous tutorial, you guys should probably know how to use the data board already, and if not, well, that's your problem. Let's get post processing affair, I'm going to add. You know, some lights, like an omni light. Actually, I'm going to add a distant light to simulate sunlight. I'm going to place it behind or in front. I'm going to go behind. Like a steeper angle, something like this. So now I have this backlight. And I'm going to add an entity, which is going to be my final camera for this. So let's add, you know, like a random it doesn't matter which entity you choose it's very important i want to underline that i'm not going to add a camera because the model tells me that this is the entity i'm going to take the screenshot from but i can add a model or even use the post processing effect if i'm that cheap so i'm going to take the camera press y to enter view from selected and this camera allows me to adjust the field of view which helps like 19 here 
and now just position this in the way I want to view this. So let's see, somewhere from this looks okay. And let's continue setting up our lightning. So we have the backlight over there, I'm going to make it like more intense and give it like a, this sort of more tinted orange. Oh, so it's pretty nice. But okay, something like that. I'm going to add a Omni light in front of it somewhere to give him more depth. And I'm going to make it blue to contrast my in the. the the ladders, the, the yellow light I chose from the sunlight, but not too blue, something cayenne. Just a bit, I want to sort of show more depth to this. Oh, we actually made us red. Oh, no. And I'm going to add finally another light somewhere below Sam. And I'm going to turn off shadows, so without shadows. And this is going to be my light that gets reflected from the ground. So this is going to be like really yellow, like something like that. And I'm going to place it somewhere here. Okay, there we go. Returning to my camera. It's starting to look really nice. I'm going to go to the post processing effect and since this is using the same free default and I don't want to change this, I'm going to unshare it and I'm going to let them wait. And now let's play with the post processing. So streaks, saturation, let's add some more color charts. Actually, we first have to enable that one here. Holding down shift allows me to select multiple options. Saturation adjust. Zero point one. I can change the gamma. More brighter. Maybe like two point four volts. And especially bloom threshold. Now we're going to add some epic bloom to this. The threshold means that how intense the light has to be to create some bloom. So it, it, you shouldn't set this to below zero. Strength. A little bit more. And now I have the radius. Now we have a lot of bloom or just a little bit. Well, this looks okay as settings, but you can, it's really up to personal opinion on how you perceive bloom settings in games. Some people don't like that very much. I, the kind of things looks really awesome. So, there we go. And now to take our screenshot. And, this, the, and there's actually a shortcut to create screenshots in the editor, and that's out plus F11. And as you can see, it has created a screenshot taken in temp screenshots, which is 0.1. This resolution, so this is the, it takes a resolution of your viewport, so you have to stretch this out if you want <coughs> a better, uh, if you want a higher resolution, but this is okay for now. Now the problem is, now I can click on this, and you open in external application and it's going to open my Windows Fax Viewer to be able to see my screenshot. And as you can see, it has a lot of artifacts and we can correct that because, and we can actually correct that if, we, if I use the command uh, gfx underscore i screen shot format, there we go, and you even get an explanation. So. Save pure index GFX i screenshot format, format in which to take the screenshot. So 0 is TGA, 1 is HDR, 2 is XRR, that's a good format, and 3 is the crappy JPG. So let's see how HDR works. So equals 1, out plus F11, out plus F11, and there we go, now we have a pretty nice 
HDR. And if I click open in external application, I should probably open this in Photoshop. And it, there we go, Photoshop has loaded. And the reason why I took this in HDR is because now if you, for those of you who know how to use Photoshop more, you will notice that image mode has been set to 32 bits per channel and this is pretty awesome. I can do all kinds of stuff with this, for example, I can go and use Photoshop's own HDR toning and play around with the tone leader detail. First, let's select an HDR correction method and play around with this. So, the, the good thing about HDR is that you have even pure white wouldn't be pure white. So, for example, as you can see in the editor, these are the shoes and the t-shirt here is really white so it's like almost so it's like almost pure white but in HDR that's not really the white I can lower my exposure and now I can see some pretty nice detail on the shirt here so that's that, so that's the I guess the magic of HDR and why it's the most awesome thing ever I've been meaning to create a tutorial about how to use, about how HDR and what HDR is in the first place in CSM and how the CS engine uses that. So maybe I'll do that next next weekend. Yeah, I'll probably do that next weekend because school visibility, that's the most boring topic ever. So exposure again, increase my exposure. Decrease my and there we go. This is one pretty epic screenshot. I can, since I have a grey background, eh, I won't, I won't, this is not a tutorial about Photoshop, you're just going to have to do the awesome things yourself. I'm going to just say that if you want to save an HDR file, you have to first change your mode I mean, if you want to export the HDR as a normal file, you have to first change your mode to 8 bits per channel. And you're going to get the HDR toner to create one final adjustment. And once you click OK, this is no longer an HDR file. And then let's go to Save Pass and save it to the, I don't know, PNG. Epic stands in mighty rules. And now, if I go to my. If I go to CSM3 in Steam Apps, go to Temp, go to Screenshots, there we go. Shot. Not here? Oh, did I say this was. Ah, there we go. Epic stands. And there we go. Now I have a pretty decent quality screenshot taken from the editor. So yeah, the shortcut is out plus F11. And the console command is I is GFX underscore I screenshot format. I'm going to put that I'm going to put the I'm going to put this in the description later. So just look at the description of the of this tutorial every time you want to every time you forget how to do this right so yeah so this, this concludes the portion of this tutorial that new users can really benefit from next up we're going to create an animation for a rocketeer and play that as a cutscene in a level see you later well not later but in a, well see you next day <laughs>